Okay, so let's have a simple trust uh, as an example for a virtual work. So this time, a virtual work plus a fabrication uh, error. So from this given trust, it's loaded with 4 kN at joint C to the right. So let's say uh, the cross-sectional area of all members to be 400 square millimeters and the modulus of elasticity of all members will be up to 100 gig gigapascal. So let's say we have delta AB is equal to 5 mm short. So let's say uh, member AB, instead of an actual length of 8 meters, so 4 plus 4, it is uh, 5 millimeters short, which is caused by uh, fabrication uh, error. So required, what will be the vertical displacement at uh, joint C? So we are considering uh, two factors. One, that is the vertical displacement of joint C due to the load and the second one, uh, the vertical displacement of joint C due to fabrication error. Okay, so first thing to do is we need to compute for the actual force for all members due to uh, the load. So we can have the vertical reaction at B. This is our roller support. So let's say this is the vertical reaction at B. So this is by uh, summation moment about A equal to zero. A clockwise moments to be positive. So this is and we have 4 times 3 minus the vertical reaction about point B times A times A. Okay, it's equal to zero. So we're having the vertical reaction about a B is equal to 4 times 3 is 12 over 8. 12 over 8 is uh, this is the same as 3 over 2 or 1.5 kilo newtons. So I think the rest will be obvious. And we have if we have the vertical reaction about a uh, B equal to 1.5 kilo newtons upward, that makes the vertical reaction at A. A vertical should be downward for uh, equilibrium, uh, 1.5 kN. And the applied horizontal force is 4 kN to the right. So the horizontal reaction at hinge A should be, let's say, A horizontal is the same as 4 kN. So those are the support uh, reactions. So we can add the actual force per member due to uh, the 4 kN load. So when they will simulate a joint B. Also, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so 3 vertical, 4 horizontal, I find that what then use. So, at joint B, so I'm assuming that a uh, member BC will be, I mean, member BC will be under compression. And member AB will be under, or let's say it is under tension. So we have by summation of forces, vertical equal to zero, upward forces to be uh, positive, or right, that is equal to 1.5 kN minus, for member BC, vertical component is 3 over 5 equal to zero. So what will be the uh, the actual force for member uh, BC. And it will be a loop. It's equal to 2.5 kN and it is under compression. And then summation of forces horizontal equal to zero. I the right forces to be uh, positive. That will be the horizontal component of BC. So this is the same as 2.5. Horizontal component is 4 over. And we have 4 over 5 minus uh, the axial force for member AB equal to 0. So we have the magnitude of the axial force for member AB We go to this is the same as 2 kN and this under tension. And then for the last member, and we may proceed to join C. So at join C, we have the 4 kN load. A compressive force, a BC, 
equal to 2.5 kilonewtons. So I'll be assuming that I remember AC. I remember AC will be under tension. So we can have it by summation of forces. A vertical equal to zero. Upward forces to be positive. So this is a 2.5. Vertical component is 3 over 5. Minus AC. Vertical component is 3 over 5 equal to zero. So this is obvious that the value of AC will be equal to our parallel. 2.5 kilonewtons, but this one will be under tension. Okay, those are the actual forces for each uh, member okay, due to uh, the actual load. So next is, I will remove the load. I will remove the load, then we apply a 1 unit load on C. Since we are assuming that the vertical displacement at joint C will be downward. So I'll be putting 1 unit load okay, downward. At joint RC. So at joint C, I think it is obvious. I made the obvious uh, that we have uh, similar members. We have AC and uh, BC. They are similar. So we have this is the axial force for member AC and the axial force for member uh, BC. So for this case, AC is equal to uh, BC and they are both for this time uh, for the one unit load they are both compression so by summation of forces a uh, vertical equal to zero upward forces to be positive this is twice of member AC twice na yung gagawin ko uh, with putting two of uh, using AC na lang since it is equal to BC twice of AC vertical component is 3 over 5 minus the 1 unit load downward equal to a 0. This will be the magnitude of AC, the same with the magnitude of member BC due to the 1 unit load equal to is equal to 5 over is equal to 5 over a 6. And they are both under compression. Okay, so for AC and BC. And lastly, for the last member, okay, that is member AB. So I'll be using a joint B. So I'll be assuming that we have a uh, member AB will be under again under tension. So this is by summation of forces horizontal equal to zero to the right forces to be positive. That is five over six horizontal component is uh, four over five. I minus I the member AB equal to zero. So we have the actual force for member AB due to the one unit load. It's the same as I think 4 over uh, 6. So we have this is uh, 4 over uh, 4 over 6 or the same as 2 over 3. And we have 2 over 3 and it is under tension. Okay, so those are the actual forces for each member due to the reload and due to the one in close. So let us tabulate. We tabulated the values. So these are uh, the axial forces due to real load. So for tension, positive for compression, negative. So the same with the unit load. So positive for tension and a uh, negative sign for a uh, uh, negative uh, or for, com for compressive axial force. Then their corresponding uh, lengths. So let us determine the product of uh, the axial force due to real load, unit load, and their corresponding uh, lengths. So you have two times uh, this one is two over three times a. And we have a value of okay, 10.6607. Alright, for member AC, this is 2.5 by 5. By 5 over 6. Right, this will be called a negative. Right, negative 10.417. Uh, uh, 
So positive negative 10 are positive. Then we have this is negative 2.5 by negative 5 over 6 I by 5. So I think pareho lang pala yun. Pareho lang sila but opposite in sign. This is positive 10.41 uh, 7. So we need the summation of the values of uh, the actual load, unit load, length, and is equal to, I think we will cancel in these two. So positive and negative. So the summation will be equal to 10.667. Uh, this is now kilonewton squared meter. So how to determine the actual uh, the, the displacement of joint C due to a uh, load? Okay, so this is okay, the, the displacement of joint C due to a uh, load. So we are applying external work, a uh, one kilonewton. This is the vertical displacement of joint C equal to this is the summation of S U L okay, divided by area times the modulus of elasticity. Okay, so this is a uh, one kilonewton. The vertical displacement of joint C equal to my okay, summation is equal to this is. 10.667 uh, The unit is kilonewton squared Meter divided by Our area Area given is 400 square millimeters Then 200,000 megapascals Or the 200 gigapascal And megapascals This is now newton mm squared So we may cancel one of the newtons So we are to multiply a uh, 1,000 squared Okay, para yung ki, uh, the remaining unit for the numerator is kilonewton meter. If we are to multiply 1000 squared, okay, the remaining units will be 10.667. Uh, so 1000 for the 1 kilonewton, 1000 for the meter. So this will be uh, multiplied by 1000 squared now in terms of newton millimeters. Okay, this is divided by okay, 400 square millimeters. Then 200,000 megapascals or newtons per square mm. So if you are now to do unit analysis, okay, we may cancel newtons and square mm. So the remaining unit will be millimeters since that is a displacement. So we'll be having this is now the vertical displacement of joint C. So we have 10 point at 10.667 multiplied by 1000 squared or divided by 400 divided by 200,000 so we have a value of 0 point a 0 0.13 at uh, 3 millimeters and its direction is a uh, downward so again why is it positive why do we have a vertical displacement positive in sign but the direction is Downward, since we assume that the, the direction of the one unit load to be downward, so again it has uh, it it gives us a positive work that the displacement is the same direction with the one unit load applied at joint C. So that is again, okay, that is displacement due to real load. So what about the displacement of joint C due to okay, the short the pipe and end short of a uh, member uh, AB? So let's compute for that value. Okay, this is due to fabrication error. So initially we have a given uh, short uh, or fabrication error for member AB. This member AB is equal to 5 millimeters short. Okay, so how to determine that value? So again, we have to apply a uh, virtual work. So that is external work, that is 1 kilonewton. Okay, 1 kilonewton, then the vertical displacement of joint C is equal to supposedly this is the summation of the unit load I multiplied by the 
displacement due to or shortening of the summation of the shortening of all members. Kaya lang for this example, uh, the only member with uh, fabrication error is only uh, AB. So mag-isa lang naman siya. So this is the same as 1 kN okay, the vertical displacement about joint B is equal to we have the unit load. What is the unit load for member AB? Okay, so we are, again, ha, we are only considering AB since mag lang siya. If we have BC and AC, you need to sum it up. Or you need to include this. Kaya lang dito, again, ulitin ka, the only shortening, uh, or the only, the only member with fabrication error is member AB. So what is the unit load for member AB? Ano yung unit load kay member AB kanina? For member AB, that is I think in tension, under tension. A AB siya yung una dito. That is the same as 2 verb, a 3. Then, given the display at a given this value, so again, if you are to do unit analysis, uh, supposedly this is 2 over 3 kilo newtons. So, if it is short, short. If it is short, you should assume it to be okay, negative. Okay? So, if it is short, our sign convention will be uh, negative. If it is too long, that will be positive. So, the unit load for member AB, upon applying one unit load, Okay, the unit load for member A B will be equal to 2 over 3. I think that is tension. The displace, uh, the short publication error for member A B is negative 5 millimeters. So we have, why is it negative 5? It is too short. Canceling killing newtons, we'll be having the vertical displacement about joint B uh, due to publication error that is 2 over 3 of 5. So we have a value of uh, negative 3.333 millimeters and its direction will be upward. So why naman upward since it is a negative? Why is it that the negative sign indicates that the displacement of joint B, joint C is upward? Okay, for a reason, what is our assumed direction of the one unit load? It is downward. So which means we have a negative uh, work. So can you recall the basic concept of work? We have the force is to the right and the displacement is to the right. It will result to a positive uh, work. So okay, for, for the displacement due to real load, back it positive for a reason that the displacement of joint C because of the poor kilonewton load will be downward. And the uh, assumed direction of the one kilonewton load is downward. That is a positive work. But for a case, uh, the force is to the right and the displacement is to the left. This will give us a negative power. Yun naman yung nangyayari due to publication error. Since the assumed direction of the one kN is downward, but can you imagine if AB will be too short, okay, these two points will be moving towards each other. So maglalapit yan, ang mangyayari sa si is tataas. Okay? So, yun yung nangyari kay uh, joint C due to fabrication error. So, if you are to compute for the total uh, vertical displacement of joint C, that will be the summation. So, we have the total vertical displacement of joint C will be equal to the summation of the vertical displacement about joint C. So we have, that is, due to real load, we have 0.133 uh, okay, plus, okay, due to fabrication error, that is, we have negative 3.333. So we have the total vertical displacement of joint C So we'll be having a value of 
And this is negative 3.2 millimeters. So why is it negative? Okay, it is in the opposite direction as the assumed direction of the one unit. So that will be the total displacement of joint C. First, due to reload. Second, due to fabrication error. So let's try all right, let's try solving the vertical displacement of joint C. Uh, this time I uh, using Castellanos uh, theorem. So by Castellanos theorem, what we have to do is introduce a variable load, uh, a variable load P, let's say at a uh, joint C. So let's say this variable load is uh, P. Then we are to solve for the actual forces for all members in terms of uh, in terms of P. So what do you nothing doing in data? Okay, we compute for the vertical reaction at, okay, at B. So this is a uh, summation moment about A equal to zero, clockwise moments to B uh, plus P. So this is we have P times 4 plus we have 4 times uh, 3 okay, minus the vertical reaction at point B. Okay, this is multiplied by 8, so equal to uh, zero. So we have the vertical reac uh, reaction at the support B, we have. This is the same as 4 over 8, we have that is 1 half of P, 4 times 3, that is 12 over 8, that is the same as 12 over 8, that is 12 over 8, that is 3 over, we have 3 over 2. Alright, that will be the vertical reaction at, alright, at P. Then, we may proceed to join B. So for example, this is joint B, we are now solving for uh, the axial force for member BC and the axial force for member uh, AB. Alright, so we can have it by first summation of forces of vertical equal to zero, upward forces to be uh, positive. Well, it's a vertical reaction of joint B, this is the same as one half of P plus, uh, we have three over two, then minus the vertical reaction of BC, that is three over and we have 3 over 5 of member BC equal to a 0. So what will be? Well, that's 3 over 5 of member BC equal to 0. So what will be the, per, the actual force for member BC? Right, so let's compute. So the same as a 0.5 divided by 3 over 5. We have this is the same as uh, 5 over 6 of P A plus uh, This is the same as plus uh, We have 5 over uh, 2 So this will be the same as the actual force Remember, uh, B, C Alright, then we have Right, we can do summation of forces horizontal equal to zero for the right forces to be positive. That will be the horizontal component of member BC. That is, okay, for member BC, this is 5 over 6 of P plus, ito yun, uh, 5 over uh, 2. Horizontal component is okay, 4 over 5 minus okay, AB equal to uh, zero. So we have what is 4 over 5 of uh, 5 over 6 and we have AB 4 over 5 of 5 over 6 that will be the same as uh, so you, 5 4 over 6 we have 2 over 3 up or 2 over 3 up P remember AB then we have 4 over 5 of 5 over 2 the same as 4 over 2 or it's the same as plus 2 so this will be the axial force remember AB then we may proceed at joint C
So at JC, we have okay, the member AC and BC. So we are computing for the actual force from member AC caused by this load P and okay, the 40 kilonewtons. So I'll be assuming it will be okay, downward. So this is by summation of forces, vertical equal to zero, upward forces to be positive. What is the upward force? That is BC. What is the value of BC? We have that is 5 over 6 of P plus 5 over Right, this is plus 5 over 2. Vertical component is 3 over 5. Minus, they introduce a uh, value of P or variable P. Minus, I AC, what is the vertical component of AC? Whatever lang sila ni BC, this is the same as 3 over 5 equal to uh, 0. So we are to compete for the action load. Action load, remember, is AC in terms of uh, P. So we have okay, the number of a uh, value of AC. So we're going to divide all terms with I3 over uh, 5. So we have the AC this is the same as 5 over 6 of P plus 5 over 2, then minus uh, it is 5 over 3 of P. So we have the value of uh, AC now is equal to so what is 5 over 6 minus 5 over 5 over 3. So we'll be having a value of a negative 5 over 6 of P plus 5 over 5, 5 over 2. So that will be the value of the action force okay, of the three members. Okay, everything expressed in terms of the value of our P. So let us now tabulate okay, what is the action load per member due to the 4 kilonewtons due to P and 4 kilonewtons. So this is the uh, table for the values. I uh, saw so previously we are able to solve for the actual force for the members in terms of the real load uh, for kilonewtons. That is 2 kilonewtons for AB that is under tension, 2.5 for AC under tension, and negative 2.5 for BC that is under compression. In the same way, we have uh, 2 over 3 in terms of the 4 kilonewtons in P. So, 2 thirds of P plus 2 for AB, assumed to be in tension. For AC, negative 5 over 6 P plus 5 over 2, also in terms of, uh, or assumed to be in tension. While for BC, okay, based on our loadings, we are assuming that BC should be okay, negative. Why is it negative? It is assumed to be under compression. So, negative, the quantity 5 over 6 of P plus okay, 5 over 2. Then we take the partial derivative of uh, We are to take the partial uh, derivative of the equation of the axial load with, uh, with the variable P uh, with respect to uh, variable uh, P So to take the, uh, the partial derivative of these terms So we have that is the partial derivative of S in terms of P We have 2 over 3 plus 2 uh, with respect to and with respect to the introduced variable load, uh, P. Uh, this is 2 over 3 of uh, P. So our variable here is uh, P. Okay, so again, this is the partial derivative of 2 over 3 of P. This is for A, A B. A plus 2 uh, with respect to the variable load, uh, P. And it's equal to, obviously, this is constant. The derivative is 0 with respect to P. And the derivative of P with respect to P is one. So this will be over uh, equal to uh, two over three. That will give uh, this will give us a value of two thirds. If you are to recall these uh, terms from the virtual work method, this is the same as the value of u. Okay. Well, the equivalent axial load of the members okay, using a one unit load. So in the same way, if you are to take the partial derivative. And the partial derivative of this term, the partial derivative of negative 5 over 6 of P plus 5 over 2 okay, with respect to the variable load, variable load P. So this is P, this is uh, constant, 0. We'll be having a value of negative 5 over uh, 6. So this is negative 5 over 6. Or in some cases, or in some references, they are just 
uh, yeah, the, they just uh, remove this value by over and the same way if you have to take the derivative of 5 over 6 p that is negative that is the same as we have negative 5 over 6 okay then we take the product of the actual load due to real load multiplied by this partial derivative times the length so this is Okay, we have 2 times uh, 2 over 3 times A. So we have a value of uh, 10.667. Uh, six, uh, then next we have 2.5. We okay, multiply by negative 5 over 6. And then multiply by 5 meters. So we're having a value of negative, let's go to negative 10 point by 417. Um, and we have lastly, this is a negative 2.5. I will divide by negative 5 over 6. I will divide by 5 meters. So this is the same as positive a 10.417. Alright, let me take the summation. And the summation of the real load, the partial derivative of the load equation in terms of P and the 4 kN with respect to the variable load, variable load P multiplied by the length, and it's the same as 10.667 uh, kN squared meter. Okay, for the summation. So, computing now for the vertical displacement of point C due to real load. Due to real load, lang yung kinoconsider natin dito. Or due to okay, the 4 kN load. Okay, so, we have it. This is 1 kN. The vertical displacement at C is equal to. Okay, this is the summation of the real load. I multiplied by the partial derivative of the load equation with respect to P. I multiplied by the length divided by area times the modulus of elasticity. So we have this is 1 kN. The vertical displacement about point C is this value. We have that as 10.667 kN squared meter. I divide by the area given at the start of the video. Let's go to 400 uh, millimeters squared multiplied by 200,000 mega pascals or the newtons per square mm. So we cancel the kilonewtons, newtons, then multiply the numerator by 1,000 squared. By 1,000 squared for kilonewton, newton, 1,000 meter, another 1,000. So we have in this now the vertical displacement at point C is so equal to. We have 10.667 uh, multiplied by 1,000 squared. This is divided by, or this already in terms of Newton mm. I divide by 400 mm squared. I multiply by 200,000 megapascals, or the Newtons per square mm. Alright, so we have the vertical displacement about point C. Is equal to is equal to zero point yeah, zero point one three three millimeters. Okay, so again, if you are to observe, ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng what is the difference between virtual work method method and the Castellanos method? All you have to do is express Okay, the actual load in terms of, a, an, in, of an introduced uh, variable uh, P. Then you have to do partial derivative with respect to P. And we have these values that is the same as the actual load for every member of the trust using the one unit load done sa virtual world. So yun lang naman yung pagkakaya. Okay, this is for example of Castellanos. Sure.